So somebody please explain to me how you are going to be an advocate for victims when you are a perpetrator. Well, hello, my Silky friends. If you are new here, this is Silky Southern Tea. I'm Silky, and I talk about true crime, world events, social commentary, whatever is on my mind. And today, I am back on it, y'all. Jeez, I'm fired up. And this is due to a new article that came out from the Roy's Report. Let's take a look. Okay, the president of Morningstar resigns, then admits misconduct of the worst kind. Is this ever going to stop? Y'all, it's been like boom, boom, boom. What is wrong with people? Okay, this came out on August 29th, 2024. This is, if you haven't seen him before, this is Chris Reed. He's the CEO and president of prophetic ministry, Morning Star. Uh, he resigned Tuesday and told the Roy's report it was because he was standing on the side of the victims. Okay, what victims are they talking about? Well, if you didn't know, around August 7th, there came a report out about Erickson Lee. And this guy was head of a boys' youth ministry. And yes, you can go back and look at the articles. I didn't cover it. It was disgusting. Um, but yes, he essayed a bunch of boys in his group. He was inappropriate. He made them do inappropriate things. And he is basically, in my opinion, scum of the earth. Now, he is out. And then there was some shuffling. Oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Let's, you know, let's try to try to... Calm the storm here, okay? Well, let me tell you something. People are sick of this. Big ministries. We're sick of it. We're sick of you preaching to us about moral conduct when you can't live it yourself. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't be moral. Of course you should. And if you can't, you shouldn't be in ministry. Hey, come at me. You did last time about Robert Morris, but let me tell you something. I didn't write the words of the Bible. Jesus did. So, hey, take it up with him. But let's dive into this article. Okay, now on Wednesday, the Roy's report were confronted Chris Reed, CEO, and with the allegations that he pursued a woman sexually in 2021. And Reed admitted to sending the woman terrible sexual text and kissing her. Now, let me just go back. Chris Reed is married married with six children seriously you don't have enough going on at home you gotta find some excitement elsewhere now initially he said he resigned because of the lawsuit of the other essay case with the boys and he said he didn't want to be the face of a ministry that was engaged in legal battle well i don't blame you i wouldn't want to either but in the wake of resignation, TRR learned of the allegations of sexual misconduct in 2021 and was able to contact the woman involved. Huh. So this goes back several years. Um, let's see, that's three years since they became aware. Huh. Huh. Interesting that this was happening and only now coming out. All right. Her first name is Catherine. And let me just tell you, I'm just going to condense it for you. Catherine was a student, seven years younger than Reed, who was at the school, the prophetic school, okay? And she gives Mr. Reed a prophetic word about his book or something he was doing at the time. And so he gets in contact with her. He starts messaging her on Facebook, and he gives her a word. Now, we'll go over that word in just a second. But basically, he started telling her she was special. Okay, now y'all know that is how a predator works, right? They want to make you feel unique and special. You know, they're grooming you. And that's exactly what Chris Reed did. He started, you know, having meetings with her in his van, private meetings, with just her and him. He was kind of mentoring her to develop her prophetic gifts, I guess. But then, you know, they started kissing. And then there was a little touchy-feely once or twice. I don't know. I wasn't there. But this is according to Catherine. And he kept sending her text messages 
that they said was uh, like really too bad. These text messages were so bad that even if he had sent them to his wife, they would have been, okay, I don't even understand that, all right? Because to me, in a covenant of marriage, like whatever y'all want to do that's just between the two of you and nobody else and, you know, like whatever, I would say it's pretty wide open if you want to send some racy text to your spouse. I think that's cool. I think that's good. I think you should do that. If you're not doing that, you know, you might want to think about it, okay, <laughs> with your spouse. But she said these were too bad for even a wife to see. So I don't know. Like, I, I, I give up. My brain doesn't go that far. All right. I have no idea what this would be. Now, according to experts, this involvement is not just SA, but it is also, it, they call it spiritual abuse. Also, because in the different levels of power, the differential is crazy. You know, you got the big guy. Like, he's close to God, right? And then you get the little bitty student. All right, there, there's more dynamics going on here. And I'll bet that Mr. Reed does not seek out and try to manipulate people who are stronger, maybe a little bit older, or in a peer group, because that would be a lot harder. Now, Mr. Reed says, I sorely regret it, I take full responsibility for it. It wasn't her fault at all. I am fully, fully to blame. Well, that's very nice. Yeah. But would you have taken that responsibility if she hadn't come forward and told people in the ministry? Or would you have just kept this under wraps? Because I'm going to say it's the latter. Now, here is a picture of Chris Reed as he prays for attendees at a Morningstar Ministries Youth on Fire event in spring of 2024. That's this year. He's still going strong, y'all. Yeah. Now, according to Catherine, she said, quote, I feel very bright and shiny that I was being given attention by the great Chris Reed. Of course she would. That is normal. It's flattering. Now, you know it's wrong, but they can make you feel, you know, manipulate you in a way where you feel like you are just so special. Now, your gut is going to tell you deep down something is wrong, but this is how these things start, right? So eventually they bring it to the church, Catherine does, and uh, they said, according to TRR, they spoke Tuesday with Morningstar founder and chairman Rick Joyner. Now y'all, Rick Joyner is big in the Christian world, y'all know that. Uh, and he is going to be taking over again. He retired, but he's coming back as CEO. And Joyner didn't think the relationship crossed any kind of a line. What? A man married with six kids out in a van in the parking lot, kissing and filling up one of the, the people that go there. That didn't cross a line? Hello? I, at this point, I wonder if we're even serving the same God. Because I don't think we are. Mr. Joyner also added that he met with Catherine about the matter and made sure she was okay. Yeah, you're never going to be okay, buddy. Not ever. We thought it had gone far enough that it needed discipline and restoration. There's that beautiful word that everybody came at me before when I said, if you are in this kind of sin, you cannot preach anymore, cannot pastor. I mean, maybe you can find some job somewhere in the ministry, but you cannot be in charge of people. Again, I didn't write the book. Take it up with him. And Joyner also said, you know, they were setting boundaries with female students. Uh, that should have been done 20 years ago, buddy. And Chris was all for it. I think Chris handled it in the best way it could have been done. And there you go. There's a picture of Rick Joyner and Chris Reed. Y'all, I can't even. I can't even with this. Now, just as a side note, Morningstar is in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Um, that is in the same area, the same place basically where you know jim and tammy baker the whole scandal y'all remember that from the 80s that was another misconduct of that kind of nature too as well as many others let me tell you i know a lot about that case because i worked there yeah that was fun
Now, let me go back and say that I believe it was in February of 22 that all this was coming to light with the leadership. But did they, you know, set Reed down and say, uh, you need to just find another line of work? No, they didn't. As a matter of fact, Reed told TRR he became a Morningstar CEO in March of 2023 after they knew. What? Reed said he stepped down from public preaching for a short time, but continued in other leadership responsibilities at Morningstar throughout 2022. Because you're a great guy to be around. I, I know I want my family around you. Sending these nasty texts to people. Groping them in the van? I mean, come on. Oh, but let's please keep him in the ministry. Because that's where he belongs. But now get this, Reed also said he publicly told the church that he had done something wrong. I guess he had to explain why he wasn't preaching all the time. But he didn't go into specifics. Here's what I told the church. I take full responsibility for it. There was a situation in my life where I needed the grace of God. Well, we all do, me especially. It did not involve sex or money or notoriety. I beg to differ. But it was still wrong, and I had to talk to my elders in my life and be accountable about it. Okay, just because you didn't have the physical act doesn't mean it wasn't in that kind of nature and totally inappropriate and totally abusive. But by all means, let's put these people back in power, right? He said upon his resignation, quote, My calling has always been and remains to prophesy, pastor, teach, preach, and write. That is why I've made the decision to return fully to what God has called me to. All right. I would say writing, maybe teaching, not with people present. That might be where you need to start. I'm not saying that God doesn't forgive. What I'm saying is these people do not need to remain in power. How many times does this have to happen before people's start taking the law of God into consideration and actually implement it. Ma, haven't we had enough in 2024? Now I want to bring up one more thing that bothers me about this case is the alleged use of prophecy to perpetrate abuse. Okay. This is where people of maybe more traditional religions or denominations have a problem with prophetic is because people use prophecy to manipulate all right sometimes people are just wrong they think they heard from god but they didn't it's okay all right but when you start using prophecy or a prophetic word to manipulate people to tell them this or tell them that first of all you know telling somebody of the opposite sex you're special that's a big red flag okay now i fully believe in prophecy and and all the prophetic gifts but what i'm saying is i have seen it people use that to manipulate other people over and over and over again that is why the bible says when you say something you need to have witnesses and let that word be discerned by everybody you don't just you know facebook message somebody and say oh i have a word for you uh no you do it before witnesses and you say something to the effect of i feel like god is saying this then you have some at least one or two or three multiple people standing there and they can help discern was it that of god or was that of flesh that is how prophecy works okay and if you are in a situation as sometimes you are and you're prophetic and you really want to give a word to someone of encouragement or something and you don't have witnesses then for heaven's sakes don't say god said what you might want to do in that situation is just say i feel like this you take it to god and pray about it and see if it's right or wrong but it is always safe to say i feel in my heart that god is saying this not thus saith god or i am an authority and so this word is 100 percent true no no Oh, and while you're at it, if you could just sow a seed of money into my ministry, that would be great too, right? Oh, I'm ticking a lot of people off today. Now, in this case, 
Mr. Reed told Catherine, you know, he's really big and important and he cannot extend personal mentoring to everybody. And he said, but I feel like I am for you. And she said he later asked her to store his number in her phone under a different name. If that ain't a red flag, come on. No. Somebody asked you to do that? No. Absolutely not. She would later see his prophecy texts and other spiritual conversations with him as manipulation that quickly escalated into a physical relationship. Of course. Of course it would. Quote, he gave me this false word of knowledge, she said. Then I got sucked in and the manipulation started. So what's the bottom line? Apparently, integrity has gone out the window. I'm telling y'all, I'm just over this. I'm over it. At this point, I think every pastor, every ministry re needs to really, really know who is leading, what they are doing. People need to be accountable and not just, okay, you sit down for a few months because you had an indiscretion, but then we'll restore you back to ministry and back to authority as quickly as possible. No, you're done. You're done. You have prostituted the word of God and the gifts, and you have used them for personal gain and manipulation and so much worse in some cases. You need to sit down. You need to find another line of work, okay? By all means, ask God for forgiveness. Continue your spiritual walk and growth, but get out of the ministry if this is what you are doing. All right, that's all I've got. I'm disgusted. I really feel like I could puke right now and I'm sick of it. But like we've said, God is clean in house and I'm glad. I'm happy for it. All right, I know you're gonna have a lot to say. Say it, but I'm just gonna tell you, right is right and wrong is wrong. And if you can't see that, then you need to fall on your face before God. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I realize I'm a little bit off the chain on this one, but I am so sick of predators. I'm so sick, especially in the church. So hope you have a wonderful day, great weekend, day, night, whatever you're at, whatever you're doing, whatever you do. Just try to stay silky, okay? Bye-bye.